Hello guys, welcome to another video. Curlcraft is back with some shiny new content. And in this video, I'm gonna be covering all of the basics to start playing Rust. So without further ado, let's get into it. Main menu. When you're loading into Rust for the first time, you'll be greeted by a main menu. The most important options being play game, or of course playing the game, options to optimize settings, that we'll check out in a second. There's also news for checking out the newest updates, inventory for checking out your skins, item shop for checking out limited items, workshop for checking out cool creations from the community, Rust Plus, which is a phone app that you could use if you like to control certain electricity items, check your cameras, and to see if you're getting rated. And finally, the last option, quit to quit out of the game. Settings. Settings can be used to enhance gameplay or, or boost performance, if done right. But for different people, this can depend. If you want big performance boost, the settings you want to select can be whoever, however you like. But I would recommend you pick some of the settings on the screen. If you want enhanced gameplay, or if you have a beefy PC, or you just want it to look a little bit nicer, you don't care about your computer, you are going to want to max out everything except for some of the settings on the screen. Servers. Once you are done with your settings, you can exit out of them and you can restart your run. But next, you want to go into play game. Once you win here, there will be three sections for server official, community, and modern. For the beginning, you are going to want to look in official. For non altered gameplay, with all of the orig original mechanics in mind. For community, it can be slightly modded and altered anytime because servers that are made by the public. Joining community servers, I would not recommend unless you know what you're looking And finally, we have modded. Modded is mostly for multipliers to make the game less grindy and more rewarding, and to make the game easier with some things like shared blueprints and increased vehicle spawns. With that out of the way, you are going to want to try and find a server that fits your needs. With that, things you're gonna want to consider the most is population, region, aka ping, and then wipe and blueprint wipe. Starting with population, you should be around 200 pop for your first time. Region, aka the ping, is usually what you would want to be the servers closest to you for the best gameplay. And for any extra information about the servers, like wipes and blueprints wipes, you're gonna be, those are gonna be found by clicking on the server and looking at the information that is given. Just make sure that the server does not wipe in a couple of hours into your playing. With that a lot of the way, I would highly recommend staying away from servers with a tag hardcore, bi-weekly, and monthly, as these are typically a lot harder for new players. Beginning. Once you've picked and joined the server that fits your needs, you're going to need to learn the basics. When you have located your first tree, use your rock to smash it down. To make this more efficient, make sure to hit the X's on the tree for some extra wood and to make it faster. Next, it would be a good idea to try and locate some food and hemp. Food is normally located near rivers that are found on your map by hitting food. Might be a good idea to start farming some hemp, node, and some more tree. Hemp that can be found around the grass areas of the map. You can find hemp, which when harvested by pressing E will be cloth. Cloth is really important for the game because it's used for many things like sling bags, bows, and clothing. For nodes, there are three different variations. Stone, metal, and sulfur. Stone is used for upgrading your base. Metal, when farmed, is used to get metal ore and high-quality metal, which can both be smelted in a furnace, and can be used for some high-tier gear. And finally, sulfur for late-game ammo and explosives. During the early game, you're going to want to focus on getting stone instead of sulfur or metal, so you can fortify your base as soon as possible. Building your starter. For building your starter, you might want to start by choosing a build spot. You usually want to build in somewhere flat and close to a monument. To build your starter, you're going to want to farm some stone and wood and some metal if possible. Start by making a building plan and a hammer. You're also going to want to make a door for the kind of frame you want. And most importantly, a tool cupboard. The tool cupboard is the most important thing in your base, because if it does not have enough materials, your base will slowly start to decay. Also, make sure you have key locks in all of your doors, your tool cupboard, for storage, make some small boxes, and make sure to place out a sleeping bag so you can respawn your bag if you die. Monuments. Around the map, there are POIs dubbed Monuments. Monuments are a good place to build around for easy access to scrap and early game loot. With that, there are many players and POIs who often guard the monuments for the precious. In monuments, you can find in barrels, brown boxes, salvage jewel boxes, salvage crates, and sometimes green and elite crates, depending on the monument. As well as that, there are also puzzles which you can do with certain difficulty levels, which I'm gonna do that, figure out yourself. Around monuments, there is also a building block zone, and some monuments, radiation zone. Besides monuments, there are people in road that goes around the map with rubbish around the road, which in some cases give weight. You'd also find train tracks and zip lines, which can also be used for transportation around the map. Safe zone. With monuments on the side, there is also safe zone. The safe zones, the game currently, are outposts, which has safe recyclers, a tier 1 for crafting, a barbecue, some seats, a repair bench, 
and a research table, and potentially in the future a gambling cart. There is also Bandit Camp, with everything else, and a helipad, purchasing mini copters and scrappies using scrap, and a gambling boat with different games. There is also a small safe zone called Fishing Village, where you can purchase boats and submarines, but it's not as important. The same can be set out of Ranch and Barn, which sells horses. But be warned, if you open your inventory and see a red target at the top right of the screen, you'll be killed by safe zones if you get the radiance. So with that out of the way, you are ready to start exploring the world of Rust. Roll her out.